did Disney use artificial intelligence to write their latest movie? Technically, Alison Moore and Frozen director Jennifer Lee are credited as the screenwriters for this project, but having just watched the movie myself, there is a distinct feeling that humans had nothing to do with this project. Both financially and critically, Wish is bombing, and I think a lot of that has to do with just how soulless and algorithmic the film comes across. So for legal reasons, I'm not making any official accusations, but these are the three reasons that Disney's Wish feels like it was written by AI. First, we need to talk about the plot. For context, Disney as a company is officially 100 years old as of 2023. Wish was meant to be a sort of centennial celebration that paid tribute to the company's artistic history. Even the title is a reference to the Megacorp's theme song, When You Wish Upon a Star. Unfortunately, rather than paying homage to the beloved classics that made Disney what it is today, the film actively relies on overdone Disney tropes without recapturing any of their magic. The story, like the title suggests, revolves around wishes. Chris Pine's character rules over an island in the Mediterranean. In order to live on the island, everyone has to give him their greatest wish when they turn 18, forgetting their wish in the process. Unfortunately, the main character soon learns that Magnifico only does this if he believes the wish is safe and beneficial to his kingdom, meaning that most of them are forgotten about completely. Completely. Asha, the protagonist, doesn't think that this is fair, and sets out on a mission to return people's wishes to them. On paper, this might sound like a solid story, but much like when AI tries to make a person but can't get their hands right, the devil is in the details. This movie claims to be about wishes, but we don't actually explore what these mean for the people of Rosa. Asha believes that taking away people's wishes removes the best parts of who they are, but that doesn't really seem to be a problem. She has one friend who's been kind of depressed since giving Magnifico his wish, but everyone else in the kingdom seems to be legitimately happy and thriving. Maybe if we saw that people in Rosa lack ambition or hope, Asha's concerns would feel more valid. But the world we are introduced to in the beginning of the movie doesn't feel like it really needs to change all that much. Even Asha's grandfather, whose wish is the whole reason Asha challenges Magnifico in the first place, seems to be doing just fine without his wish. Sure, we see that he's disappointed when his wish isn't granted at the last ceremony, but Asha never thought that there was anything missing from him up until the end of Act 1. In a film like Tarzan, the movie revolves around family and Tarzan's need to prove himself. And this makes sense because Kerchuk initially sees Tarzan as an unworthy outsider. Kala, look at him. He will never be one of us. That's something that clearly needs to change. And when Kerchuk finally accepts Tarzan as a worthy son, things are in a better state than when the film began. Forgive me for not understanding that you have always been one of us, my son. But the state of the world in Wish is so poorly established that the audience doesn't really see a problem, and this means there's little to no payoff when the story supposedly is resolved. Plot can only become poetry when all its elements flow together and enhance one another, but Wish's concept and narrative feel like they were generated based on a list of buzzwords in a corporate office. Speaking of which, we gotta discuss the characters. Disney characters, both in terms of their design and personality, are usually fantastic, but the characters in Wish are some of the most generic I've seen in quite some time. It truly seems like they threw tropes and traits from better characters into a blender and mixed them up into the narrative equivalent of Chicken McNuggets. Take for example Asha. On the surface, she has the determination of Moana, the moxie of Rapunzel, and the quirkiness of Anna, but in the actual narrative, these traits feel incredibly artificial because they don't really connect to her story in a meaningful way. The closest thing she has to a character arc is going from loving Magnifico to defying him, but this didn't require any sort of character growth on her part. The previously mentioned traits aren't the basis for character flaws or strengths, but rather superfluous details meant to remind audiences of better executed characters from previous films. Rapunzel's naive innocence is directly directly related to being locked in a tower her whole life, and her adventurous spirit is what motivates her to finally leave. 
Anna is, for lack of a better word, adorkable because she hasn't had anyone to socialize with. It's also why she's so quick to trust someone like Hans, which once again sets the story in motion. The big issue for Asha is that her motivations are so vague and therefore weak. Just look at her I want song. This is supposed to be the moment in a musical where we reveal what the main character wants more than anything. But in Asha's case, all she says is, So I make this wish to have something more for us than this. More for you than what? This ties back to the plot and world building problem, but it's not clear what issue she really wants to fix. What does more actually look like? Please, sir, I want some more. More? A common theme in Disney characters is wanting more, but the difference is they're specific in what they need in order to be fulfilled. Belle wants adventure in the great white somewhere. Ariel wants to be part of your world. And Aladdin wants everyone to realize that there's so much more to me. These motivations are clear and connect with the flaws and strengths of these characters. You root for them because you understand them. What little we do understand about Asha's motivations doesn't even remain consistent throughout the film. At the end of Act 1, it seems like she thinks that everyone in Rosa should have their wishes returned to them. But when she breaks into Magnifico's vault just before the midpoint, she only seems interested in her mother and grandfather's wishes. So suddenly, she's not trying to better her community, just her family's situation. To be clear, I don't blame the actress for these issues, but Disney did her a disservice by having her voice a role that was merely a pawn to move the plot forward. Likewise, this movie has the audacity to waste a perfectly good Chris Pine. King Magnifico was supposed to be the return of the classic Disney villain, an archetype Disney hasn't indulged in since the likes of Dr. Facilier and Mother Gothel. Fans were tired of the twist villain trope and were excited to see an actor like Pine ham it up while posing a real threat. However, it seems like the writers and or algorithm took the worst lessons from classic and twist villains alike, creating an antagonist that is neither charismatic nor well established. He begins as a rational but self-centered monarch, then quickly devolves into a laughably unhinged maniac with little to no explanation. Just like Asha, he feels like an archetype formulaically inserted into a paint-by-numbers story with little to no human oversight. His whole personality changes on a dime for no other reason than the story needs to continue and audiences expect a bad guy. It's so frustrating because the script actually attempts to flesh the king out in the beginning. It's explained that he takes people's wishes because he views holding on to a dream that cannot be as a burden that he doesn't want his people to suffer. People come here because they they know they can't make their own dreams come true. They give their wishes to me willingly, and I make it so they forget their worries. It's a compelling line of thinking that gets completely abandoned as soon as the plot kicks off, which really does a disservice to him and the stakes of the film. Magnifico could have been the key to unlocking the film's deeper message, but reducing him down to a one-dimensional bad guy means that the plot, themes, and action of this movie all fall flat. Even the side characters feel like they were written by ChatGPT. Valentino, the goat voiced by Alan Tudor, is only there to make jokes like this. Who knew my voice would be this low? So that the audience actually reacts to something on screen. His humor feels robotic, and the character serves no other purpose in the narrative. By contrast, in Mulan, even if you took away the comedy of Eddie Murphy, Mushu plays an important part in the script. He's a guide and confidant for the main character, pushing her in the right direction and reminding her of what's at stake. Not to mention, he has a whole arc of his own. You can be a guardian again. Sure, a little goat with a deep voice is cute, but you'll sell more plushies if people actually care about him. I, I went to Julia. While we're discussing the supporting cast, Wish seems to be guilty of a trend I've been noticing in modern Disney media overall. I am a firm supporter of diverse casting and making sure that people feel like they can see themselves on the big screen. So the more perspectives audiences are exposed to, the better. 
But while Disney has made an effort to increase the diversity of its characters, the studio seems to be considerably more okay with depicting women of color than men from the same backgrounds. Whether it's an original character or race swapping a classic character, Disney seems to be more okay with female diversity, especially when it comes to main characters. Take for instance the 2023 Little Mermaid. The story takes place in what appears to be a kingdom in the Caribbean with a diverse array of citizens and a black queen. With this in mind, the choice to cast Halle Bailey as Ariel seems to align perfectly with the overall direction of the film. However, it was so important to them to have a white male lead that they wrote it into the script that Eric was adopted. May I remind you that a deadly shipwreck first brought you to us? Instead of just allowing a black man to play Eric. In Wish, all the women in the supporting cast, including the queen, are people of color, but the vast majority of the men are white, including Asha's granddad. The ensemble in this film only serves to deliver ham-fisted exposition through dialogue, so there's no reason not to make the male cast more in line with the women in the film. Speaking of exposition, this movie has a huge problem with its writing. One of the most basic concepts in filmmaking is show, don't tell. This essentially means that whenever possible, filmmakers should use action or imagery to reveal information rather than just dialogue. I HATE SNAKE SHOCK! I HATE HIM! We don't need to be told Indiana Jones is a bad because Spielberg makes it plenty clear through the camera work and action. Wish, on the other hand, almost exclusively relies on dialogue to communicate ideas and information. One exchange between Asha and her best friend basically goes like this. Are you nervous? Why would I be nervous? Because you're about to interview to be the apprentice of Magnifico, our kind, generous, wish-granting king. I heard his apprentices always get their wishes granted. Imagine if instead of them saying all that, we saw Magnifico being a good king. Imagine if we saw Asha studying to be his apprentice, or watched a former apprentice get their wish granted. The exposition is so egregious that when Asha is interviewed by Magnifico, she tells him that she and her dad used to sit on a tree near their house and wish on stars before he died. To be clear, we didn't know she had a father or that he died up until this point, which is insane. Why wouldn't something as critical as this be shown in an actual scene at the beginning of the movie? Imagine if Finding Nemo cut out the first scene and then he just casually told one of the other dads, I'm highly protective of Nemo because a barracuda devoured my wife and all my other offspring. The entire medium of animation exists to tell stories visually, but Wish seems to spit in the face of Disney's heritage and instead rely on poor dialogue to make sense of anything within the narrative. A Disney movie shouldn't feel like someone asked AI to summarize a bunch of better stories screenplays. Regardless of if ChatGPT was involved in writing this movie or not, it certainly feels like any human artistry was absent from the writing process. This was supposed to be a centennial celebration, but Wish just puts on display all the issues that are plaguing modern Disney. Even Bob Iger admits that they've been focusing on quantity and not quality over the past few years. I don't know if artificial intelligence will ever be able to create real art art, but it certainly can churn out content, and sadly, that's exactly what Disney's Wish winds up feeling like. I'm Dylan, and this has been The Writer's Block.